Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is gonna be another truck talk video inspired by a channel member who posted a question when I sent a channel member only thing out asking for topics. And the topic on this one is, when you see behaviors in your kids that the ex had, how to handle this, how to handle your kids manipulating you to get what you want. Okay, I, I can completely relate to this one because this is something that I struggled with early on in this whole process, and I even still see see it now. Okay, so here, here's the first thing you have to understand, is your kids are gonna have the traits of you, and they're gonna have traits of the other person. And the problem is, for us, once you realize what you're dealing with, it's not endearing anymore, right? When you see the mannerisms, or you see the the, the same facial expression, expressions, or, or whatever it is, it really kind of annoys you, and rightfully so. I mean, because it's giving you a reminder of a situation that you don't really uh, enjoy, and you also have a tendency to think that your kids are going to become exactly like the other parent. You got to keep it in perspective, and the first thing, don't make it an issue to where you uh, really draw attention to it, because all it's going to come across is, is that you're demeaning them or and or demeaning their mom. Uh, remember that children are a combination of both of you, so if the other person is all bad, then they, th they can poten potentially think that they are bad too. So just be cautious of how you do it. Treat them, your children, as an individual, and kind of roll with that. Now, I did struggle with that, and there were some mannerisms and some things that uh, would happen that I, and I'll get into this more because that's part of what the, uh, uh, kind of about the manipulation, it kind of rolls into the same thing. But when the kids are doing things that, uh, it, it depends on the level, right? If they're doing something that's just annoying because it's a mannerism or it's a way that someone talks, don't necessarily make it a big issue, okay? Try, at least try not to. The second part about it is, is if it's crossing a boundary or if it's, it's behavior that you've decided, you know what, I am not going to allow this type of demeaning, shame-based shame tactics that they probably learned from the other person in my house, that's where you draw the line and you basically say, look, we're not doing things that way. This, this behavior is not acceptable. Don't make it about the other parent. Don't turn around and say, you know, your damn mother used to do this or your father, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that will not be allowed in my house. Just don't try not to directly tie it to the other person. Just tie it to the behavior and say, you know what, we're not doing that in this house. And, and you know, you and try to prevent yourself from saying, you know, I don't care what you do at the other house, but that's not happening here. Just say, look, this is not acceptable behavior. We're not doing that here. Uh, stop it. And depending on the age of the kids, you figure a way to to reinforce that. Now, now I will tell you, it's not easy. It's really tough. And the kids are going to rebel against it. And it's going to be an area of contention. You have to be very careful because doing that, you're setting your new baseline for the way you want things in your in your environment. But at the same time, it's going to be used it's going to be basically used against you with the kids to uh, to try to do parental alienation. So you got to be very careful about it. You got to make sure you're very calm, measured, loving if you possibly can, and doing that. I, I, in my older videos, I used to talk about how we don't get to be parents the way we wanted to be or the way we expected to be, uh, and that's this is another example of this. We have to be the best version of ourselves that we possibly can in these situations. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to feed into parental alienation. And, and what I mean is, is if you basically get angry and say, you know, that crap's not happening here. If you do that again, I'm going to take away your birthday. And you make it a big thing. No matter what you do, they're going to take it back to the other parent and tell the other parent what's going on. But if you do it in such a way that's really bad and the kid's conflicted about it, then the other parent will absolutely be able to use that to try to undermine your relationship with you. Okay, so let me get back to the second, the, the second part about this. All right, so okay, when you see similar behaviors in your kids that the ex had how to handle this. Okay, so here's, here's the other thing. 
you're also going to see, okay, if you're dealing with a narcissistic person, uh, your ex is not, you strongly suspect that they have probably a personality disorder, they have strong narcissistic traits, typically the way that manifests itself or the way that looks is a emotionally delayed adult. Meaning, and you, as I say this, you'll probably be, if you haven't heard this before, you'll probably be like, holy crap, that makes absolute sense. And what I mean is, is you're dealing with somebody who's emotionally 10 years old, seven years old, six years old, but in a 42 year old body. And the problem is, is as your kids start growing up and more than likely somebody who's been in a toxic household, children are gonna be emotionally delayed too. They're gonna roll in, your kids are gonna roll in. I shouldn't even have the X up here, but your kids are gonna start rolling into that age and they're gonna be at the same level as the other parent, right? So they'll, so your child will be, you know, a 12 year old or a 10 year old or whatever, and, or maybe older if they're emotionally delayed too, and they're gonna kinda get to the same level as the ex, and they're gonna do the same thing. Because typical narcissistic type behavior is very early childhood development type behavior. So you're gonna see that. So, so be careful of immediately looking at it going, oh my God, you know, they're being influenced by, by, the, by the other parent, and, and they're exactly them, and, and how do I break it? Just take a, take a deep breath, realize that that's, something we all went through, right? We all went through the childhood development stages and, and maturity and everything to get to where we are now. So your kids are gonna go through that level. Now the hope is, is that as decent parents, are a decent, having a decent parent in their lives, that we'll be able to help them. This is the other parent, and when they get to this point, that we can actually help them mature and become healthy, mature, reasonable uh, adults. Okay, the next thing on this is how to handle your kids manipulating you to get what you want. And it, that's a tough one. I'll give one example of what happened early on in my situation. And, and partly you gotta call them on it, right? And, 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 and the person didn't put a lot of detail, so I'm gonna make some assumptions and uh, we'll have this discussion along these lines. And if I missed it, please let me know in the comments below. And uh, if maybe you think I, I uh, am going down the wrong path, let me know too. But my situation, uh, early on, the kids would never text me. They would go to, the, I mean, I, I had gotten them devices, either cell phones or iPads, or not iPads, uh, iPod touches, you know, so that they could do iMessaging and, and, and that type of stuff. They would walk in my door, grab their phone, and go, mommy, 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 right? They would leave and it would be, Casper, it would be, there was nothing. They would ghost me. And to be perfectly honest, it was actually pretty hurtful. It's like, I didn't understand it. I'm like, wait a minute, why is it that when they're in my place, it's like it's like the ex is still here. They're, they're talking to their, to their in my situation, their mom all freaking day long. But when they leave, they don't, okay? Just as a quick primer or a quick sub note on this, they felt comfortable being able to text their mom at my house they did not feel comfortable being able to text me at their mom's house, right? I mean, you gotta look at it in perspective. The kids are trying to survive this too. Okay, so the next part about this is finally out of the blue, I get a text from my daughter. Oh, you know, hey dad. I'm like, hey, what's up? And it's like, you know, I want money. And it wasn't quite that. It was like, hey, you know, I really want such and such and mommy won't do it, so will you do it? And I basically, I went, I said to her, I was like, wait a minute, you don't talk to me at all and the only time you reach out to me is because you need something or because you want money? Or you want me to buy you something? No, not playing that game. And, and that pretty much stopped it, right? You got, and what I'm saying is you gotta be careful that you know, if you're like so desperate for your kids to, to acknowledge you and you're thinking, well, okay, you know, at least they'll answer, you know, they'll reach out to me whenever they want something, do not allow that to, do, don't set that precedent, do not. Even if you wanna do something for your kids, if they put you in that type of situation, set a boundary for it. Remember, we are parents trying to help our kids mature and grow, right? So it's our job in this very difficult situation whenever we're dealing with a toxic parent and a divorce and parental alienation, it makes it so much harder because you're fighting the crap from the other parent, you're fighting your child trying to grow in their own right, and you're trying not to make 
you know, a bunch of mistakes, but you will absolutely make a mistake if you give in to them. So if they are trying to manipulate you to get what they want, it, it, it really is nuanced on, on that, right? I mean, and it, I, I, see, that's the thing. I wish I had a better example to, to, to address it specifically, but if they're wanting something, I mean, see, I don't know. See, it's like, I'm not really sure what the context is. So I could do a couple of different scenarios. Like if they're wanting to let you, or they're wanting you to let them go on a, 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 a trip with school, right? And they're, and they're playing manipulative games to do that. Well, I mean, it's like, okay, so you got to take a bigger picture and step back and look at the overall, what's going on, and what I would say on that, right, and I have had this conversation, it's like if you want something, because my, actually to be perfectly honest, my middle daughter, uh, who's 19, does this a lot. Will use this, this passive aggressive technique to try to get what she wants. She won't say it, she'll just try to hint at it. She plays the same game that her mom plays, or played with me. Then instead of having direct communication saying, you know, hey dad, I really want to do X, or, hey, I really want to, you know, whatever. I just, whatever the, whatever it is, just saying it, it's, it's playing this stupid little game hoping that you'll guess. In that situation, what I would say, if that's the type of scenario, you need to talk with, with your kid about that and say, look, I don't want to play these games. You know, I, I can't read your mind. You know, in some, re in some ways we can actually kind of guess what our kids are trying to do because we've had, we have all this time with them. But, but bottom line is you don't want them to kind of go into life doing that. You want them, if it's a girl or a boy, you want them to go, in my mind, you want them to come in, become an adult and be able to effectively communicate with whomever they're with to say what they want. What are their, what are their needs, emotional needs? What do they want? You know, what's important to them, be able to communicate it instead of just being it out there thinking, you know, well, if they love me, they'll figure it out. And I know I've told that story before where my ex would, would play that stupid game. We want to break them from that. So we have to model better behavior with them so that they're able to do that. So I, I hope that covers that covers it. it I, if, like I said, not a lot of detail, so it makes it a little hard to kind of take an assumption of what, uh, what the context of this is. And this is actually a new channel member, so I don't have a lot of background. Um, in their particular story. Sometimes that helps whenever I know more of what's going on. So when I see a question, I was like, okay, I, I know the context of it because I understand their story a little bit more. But I uh, just want to say thanks again for the channel members who are supporting the channel. I think we're up to like 19 people. <laughs> I know you guys can't see it, but I uh, uh, really appreciate it. Um, I know there's multiple levels on that and it, it, it really helps uh, with the channel and to pay the website and, and all that kind of stuff to keep, to keep the lights on. I really appreciate that. So if you're interested in becoming a channel member and supporting the channel, you can do that down below. Just click the join button and there's more information there. If you need any, uh, if, there, if you don't understand something, just, you know, leave a, leave a message in this, uh, leave a comment on this video and I can, can help out. If you like this channel and you're new, cause there's like, I was looking at the stats the other day, like 70% of the people who watch this video are not subscribers. So YouTube counts everything on watch time and subscribers. And it, you know, if you're watching the channel and you think it's helpful, Please, uh, please consider subscribing and hit the bell, or ring the bell notifications so that YouTube will actually tell you when I post videos. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of enjoying this. So if you got more questions, uh, I'll post another uh, next, this weekend I will post a member only comment asking for more topics for next week and uh, we'll go from there. All right, hope you're having a good day and I'll catch you on the next video.